Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create multiple renders from one scene using view layers, how to save all those files out at the same time, and how to create a collage image like this one out of those images. We're going to be using an asset pack that I've started building that's available on my Gumroad page at johnnygizmo.gumroad.com. Let's jump right into it. So right now in this file, I have these 30 assets and I plan to put quite a few in this file. However, getting them all into one shot was going to prove difficult, so I wanted to make renders of each subgroup of items. So I made a collection for each group of items. We've got kitchen, the fun group, which right now just has a chest set, the bathroom set, the baskets and bins set, and then the studio, which has a light, a wall, and a floor. So I could turn on the studio and one of these other collections and render it out, and then do that again once for each collection. However, to do this more effectively, we're going to do it with view layers. A view layer allows us to control the visibility of collections per render. So, in the first case, I want my studio and the kitchen. And we'll rename this view layer to kitchen. Next, I'm going to click on this button to add a view layer, and I'm going to say copy settings. I'll call this view layer bathroom, and in this view layer, I'll disable the kitchen group and enable the bathroom group. I'll do this two more times for my other collections. Now that I have these four view layers, I can go between them to see my changes. Now let's jump over to the compositor to see how we can use these. You'll see we have access to our render layers through this node. So I can put this on Kitchen and press F12 to render. You'll notice that it rendered all four view layers. And now I can toggle through them here. If I control shift click on my render layers node and attach it to a viewer and I have backdrop enabled, I can now see the result on my backdrop. And I could render these out one at a time. I could say Kitchen. So I could go over to my rendering tab, choose viewer node, and then save this image out. Come back here, change to bathroom, and then save this one out. Of course, that's a lot of manual work. I'd like this to all happen at once. So in my compositing tab, I'm going to duplicate my render layers. And for each node, I'll choose one of the view layers. Now, if I choose the output, file output node, I can plug all four of these into this file output. I simply select this node, go over here to the end panel and open the node tab. I'll expand the properties sub tab and here under input, I'll add three more inputs. I can now connect in my images. I'll choose where I want my files to go. I'm going to use the C TMP folder. I want my file format to be PNG and everything else looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and render this again. And as you can see, I got my four images in my output temp folder. But then I got to thinking I'd like one more image with all four images combined into one. We can do that in the compositor as well. We're going to accomplish this by shrinking each image down and placing one in each corner of our output. So if we think of our image in four quadrants like this, each of these quadrants represents an image scaled down by half. It'll be half as tall and half as wide. So if we take our top image and we add a distort scale node we can plug in our image, and using relative size, we'll want this to be 0.5. I'll now connect this to my composite and my viewer node. You'll see that this is shrunken down by half in both directions. However, the center is still at the center of the image, so we now need to move this up over here. We'll do that using a distort translate node. Again, we're going to want this to be in relative mode, and we want to shift this up and over. So we want to increase the Y, but what do we want to increase it to? 
Right now we see that the center is here at 0, 0. If we start to increase the Y and we get up to 0.5, we see that we're cutting off half of the image. The reason is because we're in relative mode, this X and Y value represent width and the height of the whole image. So we've moved this image up half the height of the entire image. So we only want to move it up a quarter of the height or 0.25 and we want to shift this to the left, 0.25. And in this case, we'll want that to be negative 0.25. We're gonna duplicate these two nodes and plug in our next image. We want this one to be over here. So all we need to do is change the X value from negative 0.25 to positive 0.25. Now we'll combine this first one with the second one. We'll use a color alpha over node and plug the two images in together. We'll duplicate these nodes again for the next image. And one more time for the bottom image. We'll want the third image to be on the bottom left. So the X will be negative 0.25 and the Y will be negative 0.25. And then finally the last one will be on the bottom right. So the X will be 0.25 and the Y will be negative 0.25. And we can simply chain a couple more alpha overs to connect these. So there's our four images. I'm gonna bring my file output over here. With the Node Wrangler plugin enabled, I'm gonna shift right click and drag through these four lines just to add some reroutes so I can clean this up a little bit. Going back to my file output node, I'm gonna add another input and connect in my four. Now that I have this, I'm gonna go over to my temp folder and erase the images that are there. And then I'm gonna start this render up one more time. So now I have five images, my four main images and a nice four up display. I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit and I'm gonna grab all of these nodes and press Control G. Inside this node group, I'm gonna go over to the group tab and name my inputs. I'll go back out to my main node and rename this something like 4up render. I can also mark this as an asset. And if I save this file into my asset library, I can very easily add this node in later into my compositor node tree and take any four images and plug them in. Of course, you wouldn't have to stop at just four renders. You could certainly do this with as many as you wanted and create some group nodes that could do other combinations of images. One of the nice things about doing four like this is that because I've split the image evenly in two directions like this, no matter what aspect ratio I use for my primary image, this is still gonna turn out right. If I change this to say 1080 by 1080 and render, they'll still fit in nicely. So that's it for this one. We've set up some view layers, we've used them to output several different renders at the same time, and we've combined multiple shots into one output image. I hope that you find this helpful, and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. Until next time, I'll catch you later.